Hey guys, this is Catherine. I'm so glad to have you back with me. So today's video is a little bit of a surprise, both for you and for me. As I just said, I wasn't going to be coming back for a little while. Any new videos, that is. And I, I really wasn't until I saw Wayne Goss's video today. And then I was like, and now I'm going to have to do it. So um, basically, I want to talk a little bit about the whole situation unfolding over Christmas in the drama community uh, that has enveloped the beauty community. So, um, yeah, I wasn't going to talk about that. And then I saw Wayne Goss's video and I was like, oh, oh, I am going to have to talk about that. And why is that? So, um, let's do it. I'll tell you why. So I'll tell you my experience with that. This is why I myself actually had my whole world fall apart. I myself was attacked for a long period of time. I had what you would call a hate attack and it was sustained. It was a sustained hate attack for, I believe it was about a year and three quarters of a year of a sustained hate attack. And it began, ironically, as I was thinking about doing this video, I was doing my makeup, which is why I just kind of threw everything on at the last minute. Um, it began on Christmas, the same week as all of this unfolded. And it, it did affect my work. It did affect my job. I was banned from events. It was lies. It was horrendous. And it was ugly. It was much uglier. It was, it was, let's just say police and FBI, let's just put it that, that. Um, and it, it was, there were about, uh, God, there were, all in all, there were more than a thousand people named in, in the actual, um, that were in the final document, more than a thousand people. God, it was awful. So my point is I've been not, not like that actually joined in all the attack, but were as instigator leaders of actions. So do you get my point? Like I've been there, I've been in the center of the hurricane. And I have been a victim. That's my point. I've been a victim. I've been a victim. I understand. So, why wouldn't I say anything? Anything like that. Why haven't I said anything? Um, because uh, it, I didn't, I, I handle things so much differently. Um, I handle things so very differently. Um, and I, I chose to speak because when Wayne Goss did his video, he said, his very beginning of the video, he said that the beauty community is the ugliest community there is. And I don't agree with that. I think a segment of it is. And I think that you either choose to participate in that segment or you don't. And I chose to participate in that segment of it for about seven and a half, seven minutes and 31 seconds of Christmas Eve. And that's all I gave of my life to it. And all I could think was how many people's Christmases are going to be ruined by this. How I was just like, and Christmas is lost. And I knew it would be lost. And I, I did the irony of that was not lost on me, that this was happening Christmas week Christmas Eve, Christmas, it would go on through the end of Christmas week, and here we are, and the same discussion, nothing new, like the same discussions happening now, and we're past New Year's, 
and anyone who chose to participate in it by watching the ugliness unfold had it ruined as well and did not experience the joy. You know how much of it was ruined for me? Seven minutes and 31 seconds. Do you know how much of my life was ruined in that year and three quarters? And actually, you know, my life is still touched because, I mean, they, they went after my job, but I, I honestly, if you want to talk about how much of my life was affected, like the way it was in that seven minutes and 31 seconds, the way I felt internally watching that seven minutes and 31 seconds, I felt that way because I felt empathy watching it, but I felt, and so I was, I, I felt it, but I was like, I also felt the chaos and I felt the drama of it. Just the tornado, just the tornado, because I was listening to, I was like, oh, but I, oh, but you, oh, that, and I was like, see that I wouldn't, I wouldn't, and that's, everyone has freedom of choice, but there is, there are choices all along the way and everyone has choice, but it just, there's a chaos that happens. There's drama that happens internally. And so I was caught up into a hurricane once again, but what you need to understand is, is that every single one of us has a choice. It's not a hurricane. This hurricane that's happened is not a hurricane that has happened like hurricane, the things that just happened to us and hit the East Coast. This hurricane happened to a person, a person, and I'm sure, I'm sure his followers were affected, yes, but... There are ways to reach out and support without being brought into the hurricane, that feeling of chaos, right? Without entering into the hurricane, into the winds and the wrapping and the up uh, and up uh, and up uh, and being hit and beat up and getting whipped into it, into the frenzy. There are ways to be loving and supportive without entering the hurricane. You can do it. And so this is not a hurricane. It is an elective hurricane. It is, it is not a thing that you cannot stop from coming into your life for the millions of people who are affected by this hurricane. It may not have felt that way, but I knew, I knew that it was. And how do I know that? Because for me and my hurricane that lasted that year and f basically two, two years, oh God, that's right, that's right, three, three years, three years, three years, and I don't even feel, feel, I don't even feel that, why, why would I not? Because... Because I only, I only experience this for a totality of about an hour. The whole time. Because... All right, the death threats, there were, it's separate. There was a separate time where there's a death threat and I had to escape to a different location. That's different. Like I had, I was on my way home and then I was rushed to a different location. That's different. I would call that a different thing. But I don't even view that as the same thing as this. I, I don't even view that as the same thing as this. I viewed that as different because I view that as, a, that, that is like, 
different than than like I just saw that as part of a like that was not the hor hate tornado like this was an accusation this was not a serious death threat like I saw that as this person's death threat does that make sense but this serious death threat that was real and everything like that that was that was an extension from you know this hate tornado um and there were other things like that like there are other things in there um but it it's never somehow all in those things i still felt safe like they were there were nagging things like oh i had to like change my address and things like that but i always felt safe like if every step i felt more empowered what really like that i had to make real changes like i had to make real changes in my life this this thing the online hate what i'm talking about like the on height the the names and the lies the real lies unproven things the contacting employers the things where they're not touching like your body those things that affect you internally and make you inside just feel like out of control. That happened maybe an hour in totality because it requires you to pick up a screen and look at it. It requires you to make an action to engage it. And I never chose to engage it. It requires you to be amongst people and actually listen to what they tell you. I'll never forget it when it first started. Like the majority of that time happened, like when the first onslaught began. And I remember, I very clearly remember we had dinner at the very beginning. At the very beginning, we were dealing with friends in the community. And I remember we walked in and I was like out the gate. We walked in and they walked out and they were like, oh, and I said, I haven't read a thing. Because I felt it. I, I felt it before it was coming. Like I could feel the attack and I saw the very first text and I saw the very first words and I just dropped the phone and I shoved it away from me because I just, I just moved it away and I just, I didn't get past the first sentence because I just, when I start like, I don't continue reading things like that. Like I don't continue. And when a phone continues to blow up and I knew the type of person they were, you know, then, you know, then, then you have, you select a group of people that you trust, you know, you get onto another person's phone, you text your friends and you're like, hey, I'm not reading my phone right now. I'm not doing this right now. I'm safe. I'm okay. I'm not reading anything that's being sent my way. Like I disengaged from the phone. I contacted my friends from other phones. I let them know that I was okay. I let them know I wasn't interested in reading anything that was being sent my way. I let them know. I let it come. Other things that I learned, by the way, I learned glorious things about Facebook. I learned that you can report harassment on Facebook and they will simply remove it from your page. Like they'll remove it from your site, but they're not actually removing it from Facebook altogether. They let it continue on. You can break the law on Facebook all that you want and you can report that actual activity. They can go ahead and plan your death on Facebook. You can report it and all Facebook will do is hide it from you. But it will continue on, which is why so much terrorism happens on Facebook. I learned a lot. Oh my God, I learned so much. You guys wonder like about it. And I'm just like, it is not a safe place. Like just, oh my God, the things that happen on there. It's, it's incredible. So it... But I learned so much and it was funny because it got so bad that even Facebook had to like things that I didn't even know were going on in other states, in other cities. Those people were reporting the activity so much that Facebook to cover their own backs had to start calling the police. on other people. And I started finding out through promoters and stuff like that people were getting arrested because Facebook just liability wise, 
Like, it was just really bad, you guys, because... Like, my hate storm just got to, like, you know, real, like, real, real, real. Like, my, you know, it went so bad. But my point is, is that I, I chose, I chose, oh, my God. I went, oh, my God, I went Gandhi. Oh, I'm like, how did I go? Like, how do you chase passivity? Passi I did. I went Gandhi. I just did not engage. And that pissed them off. Oh, that's what they wanted. They wanted me to engage. They wanted me to see me in pain. They wanted me to see me hurt. They wanted me to see. That's what they wanted. And you know what else? I knew it would rip everyone else. I knew it would rip all of my followers apart. I knew it would rip all of my everyone who fought. And you know what it enabled me to do? It enabled me to keep going with my job. And I didn't change one bit. It touched me not a bit, which is why I'm like, oh, right, this happened, and oh, right, this happened. I can say that. I can say that today because I went unscathed, and I know you can sit here and say, oh, but it's their job, and it's their job, and everything like that, because, and and all I can say to that is this. I, I'll never forget this. I will never forget. I will never, ever forget this, this lesson I learned from therapist that uh, I, I had to learn this the hard way. I, I had a best friend. I had a really like, you think that would just came out of me to learn to disengage. You think that came from a chick that like, you know, whose you know, mother locked her up like <laughs> with like chains and stuff like that. You think that just came naturally? No, like, no, <laughs> that was not like a natural instinct to be like, no, like I, I'm my mother's daughter. Like I was raised to like, listen to everything and like, be like a listener and like, and take the, you know, take the critique and like, no, like, no, this was a learning curve for me. You guys, like I had to learn these skills. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm just, this, this isn't coming from a crease of criticism. I'm saying like, I had a good Christmas. Because I elected to stay out of the hurricane. I elected not to, like, I even was like, okay, like, I'll cast up on the draw. And I read, I decided to listen to someone's, like, catch-up thing and see what was going on. And I was just, I didn't even get halfway through it. I was like, this is because you are what you watch. Just like you are what you eat, you are what you watch. You cannot, you, you, if you're into that stuff, you're addicted to drama and I, you're addicted to chaos. I took that freaking Dr. Phil Chris on if you're address, are you addicted to chaos? And I, in the freaking quiz didn't work. It didn't take the score, but I knew just by the questions. I was like, oh no, I just took it last fall and freaking kicked my butt. And I was like, we've got a problem. And I just, ever since then, I, ever since taking that quiz, I have not been able to watch like I didn't realize it till tonight when I'm like, why have I stopped watching? Like none of them are appetizing to me anymore. And I'm like, oh, I bet it was that freaking quiz. Like I bet it was that quiz because the questions are like, are you able to like be alone in a room and sit quietly with yourself? And I was like, no. I am not able to do it. Maybe that's because I've been alone in a bedroom for the last seven years. I don't know. But that doesn't sound appetite. Maybe that's because I'm an extrovert. I don't know. But it just like I want to bash my head on a pan. That sounds awful to me. But it wasn't the only question. There were a lot of other questions. Um, there were a lot of other questions. Um, but it really, I was like, I used, I used to like a really cool chick from Manhattan she was holding like the Count of Monte Cristo and knitting in the other hand. And she was just like the most amazing ballroom dancer. And I just was like, you can be all three things, an amazing ballroom dancer, a knitter and the Count of Monte Cristo. Like, I want to be like her. <laughs> like She's the most kick freaking, she's amazing. Um, and so I learned how to knit and, and I used to be able to do that. And I can't, I can't do that. I'm, I'm thinking it's because I can't actually sit for long periods of time. But if I can do this, like... I should be able to knit, right? I mean, right? Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm just bursting to get out, but I think it's something else. Like, I need to be able to be calm like that. I'm getting off on a tangent and I'm running out of time. 
So the lesson I learned from a counselor is this. There was, I had a best friend. This is before I learned a lot of my skills. I had a best friend who I met her when she was really, really depressed. And I didn't realize that. Sorry, that's a medication alarm going off. So I met her when she was really depressed. And so she really needed somebody. And of course, I'm a really natural counselor. And I didn't know that. I figured out later in life that um, I was making friends when they really needed somebody to be a good counselor, but then they'd get healthy, like they get healthy around me and everything like that, but then they get stronger and they go back to who they actually were. And, and I was just like, oh, oh my gosh, who are you? And, and it didn't work out at all. And, um, and probably I was codependent and, and wanted to be needed and it never worked. Um, but in this case, this person, when she got better, she would be like, cause she was used to leaning on me. She'd be like, here, read these emails that I'm writing to people. Cause email, you know, we, she was like, read these emails. I'm writing them to my coworker and she was getting better. So she was writing emails that she, I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know she's getting better. So this is who she truly was. I, I just was like, where is this coming from? And she was saying horrific things because you say things on email you wouldn't say in person. And she was just saying God awful things. And I would help her say them in a nicer way. Like I would help her always say them in a nicer way. And then one day she just turned on me and said horrible things to me. And I'll never forget my counselor saying, well, if you knew that she was able to be that nasty to others, what made you think she would never be capable of saying those things to you? And I learned that lesson. Always remember that. A person at their worst. Never think a person at their worst would never do it to you. That's why husbands beat their wives, but they act like... That's why families who are abusive, they seem like the golden family outside because they're the worst of the people they love. And then always, even if they're nice to you and you're like, I'm their friend and they're like that to their family, someday they'll snap at you and they'll be like that with you. Someday they'll get tired or someday it'll benefit them. But whatever it is, there will come a day that they will do it to you because that is their nature. When they're at their worst, that is their nature. And whatever they're being to you is just a mask until the day the mask comes off. And I learned that and I learned that good. So just remember, I was like, they were friends. They chose to be friends with someone they knew were capable of being that way. They'd done it to other people. Like that's what I say, listen, and I'm just like, oh, they'd done it to other people. It's a risk. It's a risk you take. And I, I would never, I would never even exchange. I would never exchange because it's a risk. I would never exchange a word. A word. If they ever texted, I would never reply back, though I know they could fake it. And I'm just like, that's the way it is. That's the way the world is. But things are fake. It's a fake world out there. People can fabricate things and that's the danger and we all say snapchat and i don't like snapchat because it been, everyone loves snapchat because it can delete your bad behaviors it's so beneficial isn't it but then once it bites you in the butt because it covers up bad behaviors then we hate it so much it can't be both ways we can't be a drama channel that makes our money off of other people's bad fortune and then be devastated when bad fortune happens to us. It just doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And and it's it's a horrible place. But I just, please remember, please remember that my, my point is, is that the beauty community is not all that way. Only a corner of it is. And remember that you are only a part of that hurricane if you choose to be. If you choose to stay out of it, only way I know about it is because YouTube keeps shoving it down my face and I keep ignoring it. I've been ignoring it for months. So when I do a beauty video, because I know I want to do a beauty video, like the next one coming out, I'm like, 
which one is the red? There are plenty of beauty channels who ignore it all. You can't ignore it all. There, and I just, Bobby Brown, she doesn't know any of this stuff. I just, oh, and the biggest beauty star of them all, she, oh, I'm not recalling her name. I can't even believe it. The biggest beauty star, I'm sorry, I'm on her Instagram all the time. She's the main one that I follow. She has all the, she has the best pictures of them all. Oh, the diva hair and, oh, the dark skin. She's just bomb. She's the bomb picture of them all, and she doesn't know who any of these people are. It's not the beauty industry. It is a section that you are only a part of if you choose to be a part of. You only know this stuff if you choose to know it. And I am sorry to the victims. I am sorry to the victims, but there is a way. There is a way to make sure that you can protect yourself from being a victim in the future or to at least at least make sure that there is less damage because you just don't have to pick up the phone. Even when people are saying they're so sorry to you, I'm sure my friends would have told me, I'm so sorry that all they said this, they, they didn't get to say a word that night. I let them know. I didn't read a word and they, the whole night they wanted to say something, but they didn't get to say a word. And so I heard about 10 sentences those whole three years of what was ever said. Who won that fight? Me. Peace out, guys. I'm out of time. I love you. You guys are the best. Thanks for listening.